Good day to our viewers and listeners. Welcome to another exciting episode of our podcast series uh, with my co-host and colleague, Sikhle Tuta. Um, today, uh, we are going to be talking about the outlook of gold in the second half of this year, 2024. Um, my name is Terence uh, Hove, uh, Senior Financial Market Strategist at Exness, and we are trying to establish whether gold is still a good long trade or is it now a short trade? Uh, what exactly is going on? What's driving it as we go? And remember to follow us on all the socials, uh, your Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, um, Twitter, Telegram, we are there as well. And remember to subscribe and like. Sikhle, how are you, mate? I'm good on yourself, Terence. I'm very well and uh, very happy. Mm -hmm. uh, gold has hit an all-time high since we last spoke. Uh, 2,500. Mm -hmm. um, saw that coming. But man, even though I saw that coming, I mean, people then say, ah, oh, Terence, you know, <laughs> vision, uh, what hindsight is vision 2020. Yeah. But uh, we have spoken, you know, on this quite, quite a number of times. But, yeah, it's it still surprises me, 2,500, um, you know, for, for gold uh, in the second half of 2024. And the question is, do you think we might hit 3,000 um, this year? So before we even talk about the forecast mm. for um, H2, Terence, I really want to take a few steps back, or a step back rather, right. on gold as a currency pair. Right. right? What is it about gold mm. that <laughs> seems to be yeah. attracting a lot of retail traders? Yeah. What are the characteristics of this currency pair that yeah. make it so attractive? Okay. Why does it move the way it does? Because yeah. truth be told, gold is one of the most traded currency pairs mm -hmm. in the FX um, community, why is that the case? Why yeah. is gold the golden boy? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so I mean, if you look at the price we're trading at right now, so the yeah. question is, is it going to reach 3000? Mm -hmm. I think anything is possible. Yeah. But obviously, we've got to look at um, why is gold become so popular with retail traders right. um, in the last couple of years, okay. uh, so to speak. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Right. Uh, so the first thought is there's a psychological aspect about gold. Mm -hmm. Um, diamonds are not traded on the on, on CFDs mm -hmm. as gold is, but I'm sure if they were traded, probably you'd see a lot of flow in that instrument as mm -hmm. well because of the psychological attachment to the actual physical product. Mm -hmm. You know, in that traders have a psychological attachment that, you know, resembles ownership of the actual product, Okay, you know. Yeah, a number of them know that they're trading CFDs, which is a derivative product, contract for differences, which is really the price movement you're mm. speculating on. But a number of traders believe that a long position in gold is actually a, a whole, like you own gold. So what is it about actual gold that yes. is so special? Is it because, is it, is, it a, is it a good store of value? Yeah. Is it a, what is it about it exactly? Yes, so which then comes the second part because mm -hmm. gold in itself, it, the point you mentioned, it's a store of value. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the definition of currency, mm -hmm. gold is the one instrument, is the one product, is the one metal that meets the full definition of currency across different borders and mm -hmm. nations mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some currencies, for example, in Africa, if you travel with uh, your South African rand, you will not be easily be able to convert it into a local currency for a particular country. Not all countries, mm -hmm. but for sure, if you go there with a bar of gold, you <laughs> will not... I think that's, that's in most parts of the world. <laughs> yes, you will not have any problems. Yeah with converting that to whatever currency yeah. you need it to be. So that is where, you know, the, the, the attraction comes. Okay. You know, it's ease of use, it's currency of use, it's store of mm. value. And, you know, and it speaks the language. It speaks any language, mm. in, you know, uh, across different nations. So when you now trade it, it has a lot of those sentimental aspects to it. Um, and then it's got the utility of being a safe haven asset mm. when there's risk in the financial market uh, market market mm. yeah. institutional traders yeah. uh, you know 
tend to plow their funds into gold because it's 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 a safer store of value okay relative to 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 other asset classes so i think maybe to guide our conversation on on the forecast of gold um into the, you know h2 maybe i think it's fair to ask who trades gold <laughs> everybody trades gold yeah. uh, who is everybody <laughs> we should be trading gold right yeah. now. um so gold is uh, so the biggest customers mm-hmm. of gold are your central banks mm-hmm. and the, the the wealth of a nation mm. is measured in the amount of gold, gold reserves. reserves you have mm. it's one of the matrices mm-hmm. it's not the only matrix mm. but it's a significant matrix along with your gdp yeah. you know which is your income you know what activities are you doing in the economy mm. to generate income yeah. but when you generate that income you know that income is then used to buy a lot of gold and you'll mm. find the most powerful nations mm. in the world have got a significant amount of gold that they have in there reserve okay this is now where it gets very interesting mm. and political right where does gold come from the ground it's a natural resource yes so realistically speaking then by that matrix the one who actually has the most gold in the ground should technically be the most wealthiest which we know is not the case <laughs> right because it needs to be in that state it's mm. now the state of coming from the ground to that ability mm. to transact with it is what then gives it its luster its its importance its utility right in that in the bars that it has that are stored in the vault that can be moved in trolleys from one place to another it become it has more utility mm. than it has in the ground in the ground so right? it's more refined and purified and and you all know, of that yeah. stuff simply for the purpose of it's easily exchangeable mm. you know currency it becomes currency in that state compared to in the ground mm. you know yeah we know there's a lot of it there but you can't take the ground out yeah. give it to someone else and so forth so so that play on value that play on on currency that it has that you know uh, store of of and and being able to transfer wealth today to tomorrow mm. through gold you know it becomes a very attractive uh, aspect of it and hence gold is very volatile yeah it's tickering more than a lot of the other instruments mm. and that volatility as well is what makes it a very attractive instrument to trade okay. because you need that volatility in an instrument for it to be able to for you to be able to make money yeah. those pips that it moves in in milliseconds and so forth you know are a lot more compared to other you know uh, instruments, instruments that tend to be less liquid and take time to get to certain levels gold is is as we've spoken before during our episodes it could start off at 2400 today mm. as as the markets have opened our time by the end of the day it could be at 2000 mm. Mm. <laughs> you know <laughs> it doesn't stop other instruments from which is moving. very attractive to which is to very attractive traders. yes yeah. and that is where as as a cfd trader you mm. make your money those mm. different differential price movements that's what you're looking for that's what you need mm. so because it moves so rapidly you know which is what we call volatility it's very volatile it yeah. moves so quickly it's affected by this headline that headline this comment that comment and that's what gives you the opportunity to speculate wow in in in, in the price of gold you can be down 1 million in one minute up another million in the next minute with gold provided you know what you're doing yeah. of course yeah. so that was actually going to be my my next question mm. around the pred- predictability of private movements in gold mm. which you obviously just spoken to mm. but um what are the fundamentals right um terence said affect yeah the price of gold right in general in general so that's a very good question mm. sikhe and those fundamentals mm. become the the foundation mm. to to trade gold successfully mm. so the first is the use of gold mm-hmm. which is what we spoke about earlier the utility the store of value mm-hmm. right which 
you know, becomes a store of wealth as well. Mm. So that becomes one of the primary uses that dates back before, I don't know, civilization, you know, gold has been there. And then it's transcended through the same use through the years. We can have fancy things. So that fundamental is what then affects the price movement because you can imagine, let's call your wealth is $10 million, Mm -hmm. right? And what is affecting that movement higher or lower of that wealth figure in as far as it being stored in gold Mm. that you have. So a number of things, the geopolitics that we've mentioned, Mm. right? Um, The geopolitics speaks to the different political events in different geographies around Mm. the world. Some more serious than others affect the price of gold. Why? Because if rumors and actual wars are going on, it's uh, instability, right? There's a lot of instability in in the world, in the market. So, and that instability causes uncertainty. You cannot reasonably plan into the future, you know, because there are a lot of factors that are affecting the way you do business, Okay. right? That will affect the price of gold. Mm. If there's a lot of uncertainty, people put their money in gold Mm -hmm. so that it stores the value of the paper money at a time when it becomes safer to liquidate that position in gold you get your paper money and you go and invest it in whatever asset classes you feel um uh, you know can uh, are more stable at that time another factor is interest rates Mm -hmm. right Uh, interest rates ultimately affect Wealth, the cost of money, mm-hmm. the cost of doing business, cost of debt, the cost of debt, all of that, mm-hmm. right? And because it has an inverse relationship with gold, it becomes a significant contributor to the movement of gold. And what I mean by inverse, it means an opposite relationship. So if interest rates are moving higher, the price of gold tends to move lower because it's under pressure. Mm-hmm. And the reason, because gold does not pay interest. Mm. Its value is in the actual price that you see. It doesn't have coupon pay interest rate, coupon payments, you know, of calculated interest. So that inverse relationship and anything that feeds into that affects the price of gold. Mm. That's why you find U.S. inflation figures affect the price of gold significantly Mm -hmm. because gold, the price of gold is predominantly quoted against the U.S. dollar. That's where the relationship comes. There are other um, uh, currency pairs against the major currency pairs against gold, gold, but the underlying base Mm. uh, currency, even for those pairs to convert them to that, is the U.S. dollar. So what tends to happen to the U.S. dollar becomes a significant contributor to, uh, to, to, to gold. And in that view, if U.S. inflation rates are going higher, the expectation is that the U.S. Fed, the central bank in the United States of America, is going to increase interest rates to lower inflation down, mm. right? And that will affect... Gold. So when you see inflation figures going high or low, they affect gold because of what expectation is now starting to build up yeah. around the interest rate move. Yeah. So that becomes another, um, a, a, a second uh, mm. fundamental of gold. The third is sentiment, mm. right? Uh, risk on and risk off sentiment, right? And it, sentiment is driven by a lot of contributing factors where markets will wake up on Monday and they'll say, look, uh, for example, a ceasefire agreement Mm -hmm. has been agreed in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. A ceasefire agreement has been agreed uh, between um, Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The the U.S. Fed is going to be cutting interest rates uh, going into the... uh, last quarters of of, of the year, man, this is very good. A lot of risk that is out there is coming 
down. Yeah. So the sentiment becomes positive. Yeah. It becomes buoyant. Okay. Right? And because of that positive sentiment, people are saying, ah, look, I'm, I'm willing to put more money in shares, in other asset other classes, asset other classes. instruments, because, yeah, you know, now this business, oil business, for example, can continue relatively more stable mm. because the ships are not going to be interrupted in the, you know, different parts of their logistical routes, supply chain routes and so forth. So, yeah, let's plow into, you know, equities for Chevron and so forth. Mm. So that kind of sentiment okay. also plays into the price of gold as well. Okay. So do I think that the price of gold is going to reach 3000 by <laughs> end of year? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, I think anything is possible. Yeah. Currently, gold is trading at 2500 Yeah. Um, and I think that depends mostly on what happens now mm -hmm. between in the end of the year from a fundamental yeah. uh, political sort of uh, yeah. point of view. Yeah, no technical uh, analysis. Uh, <laughs> technical analysis for me. Really. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, ideally, you want to look at both styles, yeah. right? When you're factoring in um, what kind of position you're going to take in the markets, you want right. to look at technicals and you want to look at fundamentals. Yeah. But sometimes technicals tend to ignore mm. the setup upon the release of economic data. Mm. Right? It's a perfect setup. Yeah. The market can ignore a perfect setup once specific news are released from the markets. Mm. So you cannot rely so much mm. on on technicals. Yeah. Because when fundamentals arrive, they just upset everything. Everything, right. right. So with what's been happening specifically um, in this country, yeah. in the political space, right, we've seen how the local currency has moved, mm -hmm. right? So we can expect anything to happen in the global politics, in the global global economics, yeah. to really determine where the price of gold is going to go. Mm. So my short answer, I think anything is possible. Yeah. Even if we don't reach 3,000 by December 2024, mm. we're going to be somewhere there, 2,007, 2,800. Right. It is a possibility. It is a possibility. So, so, so that's my thing. Yeah. What, what do you think? What, what's your number? What's my number? Mm. Two 2,500 was my number, but 3,000 is my number. 3,000 is your number? Yeah, 3,000. So that optimistic? Yeah, 3,000, 3,200. Why, though? I, I think the biggest um, driving factor right now, which could work against that trend, mm. is the amount of interest rate cuts mm -hmm. that are now being expected from the U.S. Fed. Mm. Uh, before beginning of the year, we're expecting 75 basis points. And if you remember, that is what really drove gold higher, that 2024 US Fed is going to start cutting interest rates in June, July, mm -hmm. 75 basis points. That's what they told us at the end of last year, that 75 and beginning of the year is for the year. Year goes in, they're like, I ah, look, 75 is too much, maybe 25, if we are at all likely to have that. Then the geopolitics happened in the Middle East, right? That shot up the price of gold. Yeah then the interest rate story was parked. Now, this is fire talks and that interest rate conversation has come back in where the US Fed has said, look, I think we left it a bit higher for longer for too long, right? So we need to actually cut and maybe cut a lot more than we thought we should. Okay. Um, I don't think they'll start with 25 basis points, but. Uh, so I don't think they'll start with 50 basis points cut. Probably they'll do a 25 yeah. cut and maybe do subsequent 25 cuts mm. from that. Uh, 50 at one go will be very, um, very deep. Yeah. But that is what the market is yeah. pricing yeah. in now. That yeah. is what's driving. So probably 25, 25 and seeing how the inflation is coming down because at the same time, other fundamental economic data is starting to show that, look, the U.S., the actual driver of the U.S. economy, the, the level of consumer mm. of the U.S. in the U.S. economy is now constrained. Mm. Because remember when interest rate cuts and hikes happen, mm. at the very initial part of it, it's affecting the wealthy. It's more yeah. your assets. You know, Sitle is worth one billion now. Now is worth you know one point two just on the interest rate play. Yeah. Right. 
That Whereas, is so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And whereas the, 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 the lower income households, they won't feel that as yeah. yet because of, you know, they're still consuming uh, what they're consuming. But as the rates go higher, there comes a level where those lower income households will then feel the pinch because they've got less um, money to, 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 uh, to spend. Mm -hmm. And it is at that level that is really driving the economy, that yeah. level of consumption. Yeah. So if that level of consumption is now significantly constrained, mm. which it is now in the U.S., and that is seen through the earnings data mm. of your corporates, such as your McDonald's, the, the earnings forecasts, the, the revenue forecasts, mm. and so forth, and they start signaling that, look, people are no longer buying Big Mac. Yeah. Because no matter how financially constrained you are, you're always going to buy Big Mac on the weekend for yeah. your kids and so forth. No, you're not buying Big Mac on the weekend. You you're know. making your own burger at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're making your own burger at home now. Yeah. That now starts affecting, you know, the, 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 that American success story, mm. which has been the big driver. Mm. And one of the factors that has been overlooked is that the stock market in the U.S. has been predominantly doing exceedingly well because of tech. Mm -hmm. The tech industry. The tech industry. Mm. This AI conversation, cloud computing, what mm. it's been compounding and compounding. And that's what Silicon Valley. Yes. Mm. And that's been the gift that has kept on giving. giving. Now it's run its course. There's only so much more of AI we can talk about, so much more technology that can come out and so forth. And now we're really looking at saying, okay, this story is 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 coming to an end. What is really driving the economy? Because mm. corporates are what drive the, the economic success. Mm. And the consumers of what the corporates are, what selling the goods, the services, mm. the products. Mm. Now, if consumption stops, it's like, oh, oh, hold on. We've done it a bit too much. Yeah. The consumer doesn't have money anymore. That's where the issue is now. Mm. Over and above the, the, the inflation figure to say, look, the, the 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 consumer is constrained now, right? And the play against inflation, you can never get rid of inflation. You need inflation. Mm. But now it gets too constrained that we are now not having consumption. That's where the expectation of deeper cuts are now coming in to say, well, we need those consumers to what? To to continue consuming more. Those who have stopped, we need them to get back to consuming more, which takes time to unwind mm. because that level of consumer, even if you cut 50 basis points today, they are not going to now have that extra, you know, hundred dollars or hundred rand mm. in their pocket tomorrow. It's going to take at least three odd months, you know, for that income to be felt back in the what? In the pocket okay. and that consumption to come back. So when I look at that matrix, and the difficulty the U.S. Fed is under, they need to cut. They're going to cut fast and furious. Mm -hmm. that, that is what I believe. 25, 25, 25, 25 as, as we go. The 50 is what I'm skeptical about, <clears throat> yeah. you know, but maybe they might not start with 50. And if the consumption does not come as quick as they need it to come, which will be measured by the personal consumption expenditure, which is the U.S. Fed's, preferred measure of inflation, mm -hmm. they'll probably then maybe do 150, but at the tail end of 2024, not a beginning. So that's m supporting my 3,000, yeah. 3,200 okay, uh, level. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, interesting. So yeah. for me, maybe as a question, as a parting shot. Yeah. Now, a retail trader, yeah. right, who wants to make sense yeah. of all this information mm -hmm. to translate into a trading decision, yes, right. How do I make sense of all these, yeah. um, all this information, all this data, and all these insights to take a position whether I want to go long or go short? Yeah. And two, um, the platform I use mm -hmm. or the broker that I use mm -hmm. when I want to trade gold. Yeah. What should be my considerations there? First of all, very simple. They need to come over to Exynos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you come over to Exynos, we've got great spreads. Mm -hmm. um, your money is your money at Exynos. Mm -hmm. You trade well, 
You make 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 2 million, 3 million, whatever it is you make, you're going to get it. And that is a very important factor that a lot of traders overlook, that when you are successful with your trades at Xness, you get your money back. Mm -hmm. Other brokers will try find reasons of you not getting your money, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, those myths we've spoken about. So that is a very important factor that your trading is only as successful as the tools you are using, mm -hmm. right? And come to Xness. Secondly, why come to Xness over and above the platform, the right liquidity levels, your money is your money. You'll be able to have these conversations with Terence, with myself, you know, mm. through the sessions we have yep. for our clients every week. We go through this mm. and, and, you know, we are able to take it to granular level. And I must add that yeah. this is not giving financial advice. Exactly. During the sessions, yes. we don't give financial no, advice. No. It's just talking about trading yes. ideas. Yes. And um, we, we are unlocking what it all means. Yeah, okay. And it, unlocking what it all means, it makes it easier for you to see whether you should buy or sell. Yeah. So we help you demystify okay. the big cloud. The, and you make your own trading decision. And you make your own trading decision. Okay. So, so that will be the best advice, you know. Um, and, uh, and again, follow the markets, you mm -hmm. know. Read the news, listen to the news, understand what's going on. That will be, uh, you know, the, the, the third bit of advice, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and eventually it will all make sense to you for sure. You know, it will all make a lot of sense uh, to you. So, so yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that will be... My, my, my advice. And on that closing point, uh, to our friends, um, listeners, and viewers, thank you very much uh, for, for tuning in uh, to today's episode. We really appreciate it. And remember to subscribe, um, like uh, on all our various uh, social media channels, uh, your YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Telegram as well. Uh, so follow us on all these socials uh, and keep up to date with uh, the forthcoming episodes. For myself, Terence Hof, thank you very much. And my colleague, Sikle. Cheers. Thanks for now. Bye for now.